Well, okay. There we go. Just my chair here. Sit where maybe everybody can see me. I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe I'm going to record this whole video and my head's going to be chopped off. Um, I'm unrested and I'm back again with another JFAT. Continuing on with our art series because I got a great response from our la my last video on uh, being an artist in Japan. I found out quite a few people who watch me either enjoy art as a side hobby or actually do have the wish to become an artist. Also thank you Busan Kevin for directing anyone here who asks you the question about being an artist in Japan. Thank you for that little shout out. Um, I would also like to let you guys know that in a future vid, uh, probably coming out in October, I'm going to be doing a collab with Olden Youth, who is another J vlogger you should check out. Uh, Olden Youth, I don't know, I don't want to give too much of his own history away because I don't know how much personal stuff he wants given out, but the, the man's got lots of Asian history and mythology knowledge, I mean, on an epic level. Um, I would seriously doubt any J vlogger out there has the level of uh, holistic and mythological and historic knowledge of all the Asias. Now, I'm not just saying Japan because he's been all over. He's been in China, Sri Lanka, all different tar all different types and parts and countries and places and down to the tiniest little villages and stuff like that. So, I'm going to be doing a video with him about Japanese yokai because. Both of us enjoy drawing yokai. We enjoy the history of Japanese yokai. And for those of you who don't know, yokai are Japanese monsters, ghosts, uh, sometimes obake too, uh, which are ghosts actually. And um, they are everything from the Tengu to uh, different oni, um, which are demons, and all different types. Man, there are so many. Any of you who've read the manga Gegege no Kitaro, know how many different types because that manga itself uses a lot of different types. So anyway, we are going to be doing a J-Vlog collab on not only the drawings we've made of these monsters, but the history behind these monsters as well so that you can learn a little bit about um, the different things that we've studied ourselves, not just in art, but historical and mythologically as well. So uh, that's going to continue on with this art series that I'm doing. And I think if you do enjoy that aspect of Japanese culture and also in the manga as well, it's a great combination of both. And I think you'll really enjoy it. So stay tuned for that in the future. Today, what I like to talk about is uh, the difference between re requests from Western clients and Japanese clients and how your knowledge base really needs to change uh, for Japan because of how different some artistically rendered things can be. And this kind of works itself into um, gestures, mannerisms, history, and a bit of mythology too. But I'm not going to go too much into mythology today because I want to save that for the yokai video. Um, so first thing I want to get into is when you're asked to do a commission, most likely you're used um, to doing a layout or a commission which involves some sort of uh, scene or possibly even a full-fledged little story, a graphic novel, a manga, nado, nado, nado. If you're doing anime or some kind of animation, that really is totally separate from what I do. I really don't have any experience with that aside from doing like flash animations, which are kind of cheating anyway because you can just move cell frames. Um, I'm just talking about uh, old school and um, I guess it would include digital rendering as well because you really are just drawing with an electric pen. It's not that different. And I've used those programs before too. And I plan on moving in on a bamboo pad soon too, which is a digital um, pad and pen that maybe some of you know. It's, it's highly, highly popular here in Japan. So I'm looking to move into that as well for my mediums. Um, the thing I want to talk about is when you're asked to draw these layouts, is you've got to go into some Japanese culture that's going to be different from expressions, gestures, stances, and overall outlook on life when approaching characters that they would ask you to draw. For example, if you were asked to draw something that had a very articulate or well notable attribute such as a gesture that had to be known and identified, uh, i.e. nervousness, um, shyness, um, things that are commonly seen in different types of Japanese manga for main characters, 
you've got to realize that sometimes these are portrayed differently and that's something you need to make sure you've researched before you get into a commission for a Japanese person. Um, it's not that they won't accept the Western style, but if they're drawing it with the premise of a Japanese base, um, they will expect you to have more of the Japanese gestures. Now I have seen in the past with things like Death Note, which is actually taking very western style drawn characters who live in Japan, which is kind of strange, it's, it's hard for me to follow. Um, they tend to switch between both western and Japanese style gestures, I notice. So there will be also hybrids as well that you will get. Um, the most important thing is to confirm with your client how much of which they want or if they only want one particular. I have had the Japanese clients who have told me they only want Western style gestures. Uh, for example, um, if you say, I, I wouldn't want that, I, I don't need that, or it's not necessary, a Japanese hand signal is to wave your hand in front of your nose like this. Now, if I drew that into a Western style comic, someone might think something smells bad, right? So you can see how particular things like this can be. If you've not confirmed which one you want, you may have just told your Japanese client that your character is saying something smells bad. Well, you're probably going to lose a client there. That shows you did no research and could possibly really run afoul with what kind of comment or situation you're getting across. Um, so you can see where it takes, uh, it, 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 it is necessary to be careful to take your time and make sure you understand what composition you're getting into. Um, also, take into account um, if they have a set style. Um, and by set style, I mean you will notice, although things do vary as far as actually like, what people wear and stuff like that, there is a one set style pretty much for anime and manga. Um, some of the characters change around a little bit, but let's be honest. Okay, big eyes, small chin, kind of sharp oval faces that come to a point that tends to be, you know, the style. In America you see many, 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 many different styles. Everything from airbrush to uh, all different types. I've even seen oil paint comics and they look everything from photorealism to absolutely goofy cartoony characters, okay? Um, the same is not always true in Japan. Either they have that style or they have another style which literally translates into so bad it's good style. Um, an example of this would be like um, Tashi no Daring wa Gaikokujin, all right? My, my husband is a, um, a foreigner. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to translate that in my head. Um, that comic is drawn in a style that they literally translates into so, so bad it's good. It's not really like a super bad style, but it's not like obviously super advanced skill level. But she has her own set style that she uses to draw for that. Now, I will say there is one exception to this. Um, Therma Rome. Therma Rome, that lady who I have the utmost respect for, she is the most amazing uh, manga artist. I highly recommend if you get a chance, read Therma Rome. She has actually taken the time with her publisher to make sure to confirm that she could use all different type of European style facial structures. And you'll notice quite a bit of difference in her drawings. And she is classically trained in a lot of the distinct masters such as, you know, the statue of David, the way it's drawn, okay? That's a distinct look from back when the masters made their sketches, Leonardo da Vinci's, um, you know, canons of proportion and stuff like that. She's, she's trained in that style as well. And she's asked, because it has such a European theme, to mix those two styles. So there's an example of someone in Japan who's Japanese but has actually crossed over. So I don't want to say all Japanese stick to just that one style, but for the most part, going away from that style, if you're in Japan, drawing is the exception. Um, with my Western clients, it's sometimes also difficult to confirm because there are so many variations, you really need to make sure that you latch on to exactly the same image that they have in their head as well. Um, and by doing this, I want to go back to my video before where I said always do an under sketch and also try to write about it as much you can. I don't know how you are, but I'm not a very good writer, so I try to rely on my art as much as I can. If you can put both together, the writing 
that, that means a description of what you're going to draw. But there's so much more I could go into on this, I don't want to go crazy on tangents. What I do want to do is end this video with saying, when we get into mythology, we'll get into that collab video that I'm going to do with Olden Youth about yokai. I want to save all the mythology for that. Also, I wanted to go ahead and add the fact that soon, TKO Sam and I were going to be trying to start our own little live vlog show that we've talked to Victor and Hiko Simon. We know it's not our own original idea. They've got 2.5 Oyajis. We talked to them about this, and we talked to them about possibly having our show right after their show, creating an almost power hour or power hour and a half of um, Gaikokujin in Japan TV. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, and let me tell you, Sam's got an incredible lineup. He's got a immigration lawyer. Uh, he's got a friend who is the head of the Tokyo ALT union. Um, and he's got some other really great connections that I never knew. Sam, you're quite hooked up. I never knew he had connections too. So with his networking and both of our interviewing skills combined and a little bit of BS thrown in there, um, you could watch another interesting show right after Hiko Simon and Victor's. And uh, we're going to try and get that started. I don't think it's going to be this Wednesday. Maybe it is. If it is, we will make an announcement, of course, because we're going to try and plug, plug, plug. But I think it might be the Wednesday after this Wednesday, because we just, you know, we're, we just started this idea like last week. So we'll see how it all goes. We'll see if we both have enough time and if my life doesn't get too busy. Possibly that will be a uh, full feature run that's going to go every week. Until next time, I'm unrested. This is JFAC. You have any questions? Send them to me. Peace.